Coming up today on Harvest, musical guest Laura Kazor can't get enough of God's love. And today she explains why with her new music from her new release, Love Enough. When she was just 10 years old, Laura Kazur wrote a song for a neighbor who had been diagnosed with cancer. It was at that moment that she learned the power of song, and she's been writing ever since. Laura is a top 20 recording artist, an inspirational speaker, and a worship leader. And I might add, she has a love and a passion for teenagers. And she looks like a teenager. Hey. Hi, Laura. Well, you're a teenager. <laughs> You're not a teenager? I'm not. Uh -oh. No, she's, not. she's married. Not I that you married. can't be married at, you know, as True. a teenager. But I didn't I think it was, you know, your case. No. No. no I'm actually, I'll be 30 in uh, September. Wow. And I just to just <laughs> divulge my age, but yeah. Well, I'm going to tell you what my mom says. She says, when you live holy, you look good. There you go. So there you go. There's a reason you look great. That one. Thank you. Well, I introduced you and said that you wrote your first song when you learned that a neighbor had uh, cancer. Mm -hmm. And it has kind of just taken off since then. Tell me about your background. 
Sure. Well, I'm, I'm from Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. so I grew up in the Philadelphia area. And I was always very involved in music. I mean, as a small child, I was playing the violin, the clarinet, the piano. And, and really, um, I just, I, because I loved playing the piano, I would sit and just kind of improvise. And then really, around 10, 10 or 11, I just started writing mm. my own music and mm. writing songs. And, and that was when I wrote that song for Rose, uh, Our Neighbor. What was it that kind of, uh, obviously the story is touching, but that kind of grabbed your heart about your neighbor and, and what did the, kind yeah. of the Lord kind of work through you to put on paper? Absolutely. Well, he, t he taught me the, the power of music to heal and to encourage and that it's really a gift. If he's given us a voice and he's given us the ability to create music and I really f believe that he speaks through it and he speaks to his people through music. And that was really the biggest lesson that I learned then and, and I just kept it up. You know, I sang in church all the time and then just kept writing from there. Well, I know that your uh, neighbor, Rose, died. Mm -hmm. Did that in any way discourage you or did it give you more lyrics? No, actually, she, she did pass away and it was very tragic. And it, no, it didn't discourage me because I knew in that moment in time, you know, when she needed it, she had it. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't necessarily, you know, the end, end all be all wasn't her healing necessarily, right. but it was in that moment when she's going through that trial. And mm -hmm. I think that's the biggest lesson that I learned. Now, there was a time when you remember when you first heard worship music. Yeah. I guess you were different. I mean, you were used to a different type or genre of music. Yeah. So. I, I grew up in a very traditional, musically it was very traditional. So we sang out of a hymn book, which I loved. And we oh, did yeah. we did a couple praise choruses, but it I wasn't. I love Sweet Hour of Prayer. Yeah. Oh. I, I know that sounds like a really old one, but my grandmother used to sing no, it. Oh, absolutely. Here. And we, so we, I was raised on all of, you know, all, every hymn and which, um, yeah, so it, when I went to my first contemporary worship service, I was in high school. It was really the first time I had ever even been exposed to it, and I was just like, whoa. You know, mm -hmm. I was really floored. Mm -hmm. what, what is it about music that you think is so engaging or so impacting on, on the human soul? Yeah, well, music is very universal. You know, it's something, and this I'll, I'll maybe touch on this later, but it's very not offensive. You know, you can mm -hmm. approach someone with the message of a gospel through music because it's everybody loves music. You know, we love to hear it. We love to sing melodies. So I think that that is, that's probably the, 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 the thing that I see that has the biggest power, really, is it's kind of its universality mm -hmm. and that you can reach people. Well, I, you know, I was listening to the CD, and I love these lyrics. Um, Am I too lost for you to notice? Yeah. Too lost for you to find. Mm -hmm. I think that's in Love Enough. In Love Enough, yeah. So where did those lyrics come from? I know you co-wrote almost every song yeah. on the project. That was actually the very first song that we wrote for the for the album. Mm -hmm. And um, that was, actually, I, r I really believe it was that actual particular line that kind of came first. And because I you know there have been points in my life where I feel like I haven't necessarily been living 100% for the Lord. And I've had that conversation with him in prayer. You know, have I gone too far off the path for you to find me? And that was really just out of a dialogue that I was having with my producer, uh, who was also the co-writer on the song, and that's kind of where that was born. And what is the answer to, uh, how did God respond? I know he responded in a song, yes. but what was that journey like? Yeah, well, that, you know, obviously that he, we are never too lost for, for him to find us, and that mm -hmm. he loved us enough to send his own son to die on the cross. And that is the measure of how far and how deep he will go to bring us back into a relationship with him. And that was the answer then, that's the answer now, and it's the answer in the song, and it's a really powerful message. Mm. Uh, how has your life kind of changed going from, you know, where you were to, to kind of where you are and really getting a lot of traction in, in the industry, so to speak? Yeah, it's, it's really been an awesome couple of years. It's been about two years, really, been on this, this path, and it's been incredible. You know, it's, it's the best part of it, and I can say this hands down, is the people. Mm -hmm. I've, that I've gotten to meet. The fact that I'm sitting here with you two this morning is just a testimony to that. They're just the lives that I've been able to kind of intersect with and have, you know, share in ministry with. And that's been the best, best thing ever. And it's not about, like, you know, name recognition. It's not about anything else other than being involved in ministry and being out, you know, on the road and, and meeting people and sharing life with people. Mm. Well, Laura, we've interviewed many artists on this show before. And, you know, one of the questions I always ask is, this is this truly you because I know that sometimes when you make that move to Nashville and you hook up with the right people to you know produce this music yeah. do you still get a chance to sing what you want to sing about that's a great question mm -hmm. that is that's probably the toughest part of it is because there is so many things in the industry you mm -hmm. know where 
people could sort of steer you one way or another and you mm -hmm. could certainly lose sight of yourself but but this is definitely me you mm -hmm. know and I think that it's it's cool that I uh, uh, you know was able to write co-write all the songs and I think I certainly have a voice in that but this is you know this is who I am and I'm really glad for it. Well take me, let's uh, turn the corner a little bit and talk to me about your ministry. I know you have sure. a passion for teens mm -hmm. and reaching out to teen mm -hmm. girls. Yeah. Talk, talk to me about that. Yeah, well it's actually one of those things. You know, you don't fight what God is doing in your life and I find that before I kind of wanted to kind of carve out niches or maybe work with mm -hmm. women and but every time I would have a concert it would be the young girls, you know, the mm -hmm. tweens, the 12, between 12 and 14, 14 yeah. and 16 who would just come running up to me and just want to spend time with me and want to sit and talk to me and mm. it was just an, an audience that God had created for me and I thought well this is this is I don't really need any any more you know any, any more symbols I mean, exactly, really any more clarity like yes. this is where I need to be working and this is who I need to be spending time with and so uh, uh, I started a ministry called Lift Up University or Lift Up U mm -hmm. and it's essentially a girls conference you know, I do them around the around the country, and it's usually an all-day thing on Saturdays. And I'll go to a mm. church, and the church will sponsor it yeah, generally, and it just invite the, the the tweens and their moms. Yeah. And mm -hmm. we'll share music, and I'll share my testimony, and I'll talk a little bit, and it's just a time of encouragement. What are some of the uh, maybe greatest challenges or or issues that uh, mm. yeah. these young ladies are are bringing and kind of asking, and you know, your Absolutely. wisdom? Absolutely. There's so many, and it's funny too, and I it's kind of. It, I love the fact that the moms are there too because these are issues that the teens are dealing with but there's there are issues that women deal with period uh, self self-worth self-esteem knowing their identity in Christ for the younger ones certainly the issues of purity and beauty and understanding where beauty is found and but that really the one I just love to talk about is our identity in Christ because there are so many things that we want to identify ourselves with you know in popular culture you mm -hmm. know we want to be you know, X, Y, or Z, or whatever they have on the Disney Channel, or whatever they have on MTV, but really knowing that our identity is found in Him and, and in no one else. Well, then tell me, how are you able to convince them that beauty is not everything when you're strikingly oh. pretty yourself? <laughs> That's so funny. Well, actually, <laughs> I, I was not, I had, I went through many phases in life, and okay. I, when I was in middle school, I always struggled with weight. You know, it was an issue that was very near and dear to my heart, talking to them about that, about mm -hmm. self-image. Mm -hmm. And I didn't particularly like myself very much. You so know? you didn't see yourself as pretty? I then. certainly didn't, for a long time, for a really long time. And so I can definitely talk about that okay. and my struggles. It's very personal. Well, I also, you know, I listened to the CD. I enjoyed um, Invisible. And then when Grace calls you out, I mean, all of the, the cuts on the CD are great. So to connect with Laura, you can go to lauracazor.com. And if you can't spell that last name, you can go to harvest-tv.com <laughs> and click on Show Info in the menu bar for an easy way to link to her site. Harvest will continue in just a moment.